Good morning, Sound Church. It's great to be with you on this day after Christmas as we wind up a magnificent year. Oh, the things God has done as he's led us on this journey from starting this endeavor on the foundations of the Word of God and then moving forward to where we find ourselves today, celebrating the advent of Jesus, celebrating going into a new year, 2022, full of promise. Now, over the past few weeks, we've been looking at a lot of different things, but before we get into the word this morning, first I'll remind you, I'm Barry, senior pastor here at Sound Church, and I'm just so glad that you've chosen to join us right here online. And I want to remind you that we will be having, beginning at the first of the year again, every Wednesday night at 6.30 at our offices in Wellington, Florida. We'll be having our deeper sessions. We'll also be meeting at Royal Palm Beach Cultural Center every Sunday morning at 9.30. So come out and join us in person. And if you'd like to support what we're doing, you can give. You can give online, you can give via text, or you can give in person. So feel free to do that as you feel led by the Spirit. But we just wanna encourage you to be part of what we're doing to make God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. When we gather together, we are the ecclesia, the legislative assembly of God, and we can transform the atmosphere over our city, over our county, over our state, over our nation, and throughout the world. So come and be a part of what Sound Church is doing. Now, a few weeks ago, we were talking about the advent of Christ and how the wise men followed the star. God chose to give them something they could relate to, but it was a sign in the darkness of heaven, a light that led them to encounter Jesus. And we want to look deeper into that today. Now, I want to start again in the, in the prophecies of Jesus that we find in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah. Now, the book of Isaiah is about a little over halfway through your Bible. So if you have your Bible, just open it up to the book of Isaiah. It's about uh, three-fifths of the way through the Bible. And we're going to go to the ninth chapter. Now, this was written long before Jesus ever came to earth, but it's a prophecy of Jesus' birth. And I'm only going to re be read the beginning. Later on, it's where it talks about, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. But at the very beginning, at the first verse of the ninth chapter, of the book of Isaiah, we read this. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. Now, I said it a few weeks ago. There are many people in our nation today who are in distress. This time that we've passed through has left a lot of people questioning, a lot of people wondering, a lot of people truly in gloom and distress. But there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress when they encounter Jesus Christ. He is the answer to everything. Now, the word goes on to say, In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, God will honor the land of Galilee of the nations by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. And verse 2 is a key verse for us today. The people walking in darkness, look at that. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. It's not past tense. It's not future tense. The people walking in darkness at the advent of Christ have seen a great light. You know, sometimes when, you, I, when I've spent time in Albania and the lights go out, I have to make my way around in total darkness. And I don't know about you, but whenever the, the lights maybe go out in a thunderstorm or something, I don't know why, but in order to feel my way around, I often close my eyes so that I navigate just by touch because I can't see anything anyway. So many of us are so accustomed to living in darkness because we haven't encountered Jesus, that even when the light has come, we don't apprehend it. We don't comprehend that there's light there that we can grab hold of, that will guide us. And we just continue to wander blindly, feeling our way around. 
But people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You, God, have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. That's my prayer for us at Sound Church. That's my prayer for the people of Palm Beach County and the state of Florida. That's my prayer for the entire world in 2022. Enough gloom, enough doom, enough despair. It's time to embrace the light of Christ and walk in that great joy that comes from knowing that He is at hand. What about you? Are you walking in darkness? Are you this morning still mired in gloom and distress because of the situations of the world that surround us? Well, I tell you, we don't have to be that way. We can grab hold of Jesus Christ, who said himself, he is the light of the world, and he will guide us. We no longer have to walk with our eyes closed, feeling and, 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 and living only by our feelings. We can open our eyes and we can see Jesus and he can lead us where we need to go. No longer led merely by our feelings, but led by the wisdom that comes by the infilling of the Holy Spirit and following Jesus. And that's my theme that we'll be talking about as we move into the new year. The new year must be filled with people who follow Jesus. We need to be disciples of Christ. Let's go over to the New Testament in the first letter of John. Now, some of you might not know that there's a gospel of John, but John also wrote three letters to churches. Those three letters are near the very back of the Bible. And we're going to look at 1 John chapter 1, beginning with verse 5. So turn your Bibles over near the end. Find 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, and read it with me. Verse 5 begins, This is the message we've heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In Him there's no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him yet walk in darkness, we lie and don't live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son purifies us from all sin. Wow. If we walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, then the blood of Jesus, which was spilled on a cross at Calvary, as he hung on a cross and allowed his blood to be poured out as a sacrifice, a penalty sacrifice that we would not have to suffer. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, that blood purifies us from all sin. And therefore, there's no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus because his blood has purified us and we don't need to be afraid. But here's that message. God is light. See, I've got lights on in this room. You've probably got lights on at home. Your computer or your television may be glowing. But the only real light, a light like you've never comprehended before, is the light of the world that is Jesus Christ. In him, there's no darkness at all. You know, look at your screen. Over here on this side, there's a little bit of darkness. Up here in the logo, there's a little bit of darkness. Here around my, 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 my neck, there's some shadows. There's a little bit of darkness, even though there's TV lights here. There's, there's light shining. But in God, there is no darkness at all. God is light and in him, not just him, but in him is there is no darkness at all. Now, John is also one that wrote to us and told us to abide in Christ. He said, he quoted Jesus when Jesus says, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me, be grafted into me, become part of who I am. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. So we abandon the darkness, and we grab hold of the light, and we are grafted into the vine of Christ, drawing nourishment and life out of the very one who created us with His Word. And there's no darkness. There's only light. But if we walk in darkness, where's the truth? If we choose to walk away from the light, 
If I choose to put my hands up and say, no more light, darkness overwhelms me, even though the light is still there. Sometimes we're that way with Jesus. We meet Jesus. We're washed by the blood, but we don't walk in the light. We choose to remain in darkness. It's as though we walk outside and we close our eyes and we stumble through the street because we refuse to allow the light to show us the way. But, verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. That's with God and with each other. We can connect in truth, not in facade, not in fear with other people. We don't have to be afraid of what people think of us if we're first in relationship with God. Then we can be in real fellowship, real relationship with others because we've been washed by the blood. We've been cleansed by Jesus and his sterilizing, wonderful, life-giving light is shining on us. You know, at the supermarkets, Sometimes they'll have a cart sanitizer where you push the cart in and press the button and a light shines on it and it kills all the COVID germs and everything else. The light of Christ is like that with the darkness of sin. If we allow the light to shine on us continually, no darkness, no sin can survive. God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thought. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we can relate to one another. We can have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, purifies us from all our sin, cleanses us, sanitizes, sterilizes us from all sin so that we can be everything that God called us to be. Doesn't that sound like where we should be as we head into the new year? How awesome it was when that light shone down upon that manger and three or four or five or however many wise men came and they bowed before him, they humbled themselves and they presented him with with wonderful gifts and they worshiped him. He is light. In him there is no darkness at all and his light is drawing us to him. Will you approach him? Will you give him yourself? Will you adore him with your worship today? In the gospel according to John, and this is how it reads. These are the words that were written by Jesus. And we see Jesus talking to the people. And it says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If we follow Jesus, We don't have to worry about walking in darkness. We have life. Maybe you're sitting at home and you're like, I don't understand. God is shining his light right now saying, open your eyes and see. Come to me and I will give you the light of life. You know, I talked about light sanitizing, but light also, if 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 you're trying to grow something in, in plants, in agriculture, you need light. You know, some plants say they need plenty of sunlight, but even if you're growing in a hothouse, you've got to have lights up. You've got to have light in order for life to flourish. Jesus is the light of the world that gives us the light of life. We need to have Jesus in order to have that abundant life for the life in us to flourish. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Maybe we go out and we look for light. We look for enlightenment. We look to be woke when what we really need to be is awakened by the dawn of Christ. We look for light, but we're looking in dark places and we only find things that are artificial. We never find the real light. But if you go to the cross at Calvary and you look upon the face of Jesus, And you hear him say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he says, it is finished. Unto you I commit my spirit. The love, the blood, the forgiveness, the healing, the deliverance, the fullness of the good news of Christ comes crashing down upon us and brings us the light of life 
and we can see clearly. If you've never done that, I'd encourage you to do that right now. Just say, Jesus, I want to see the light. I want to accept the forgiveness of my sins that was paid for by you on the cross at Calvary. I want to walk in the light as you are in the light. And I want to trust your blood to purify me from all sin so that I can be in the light and we can be reconciled in fellowship. God, I pray that right now for everybody watching this online. I pray right now that we will be purified from all our sin and reconciled to the Holy Heavenly Father with fellowship with one another by the blood of Jesus. Let's go over to Matthew and see what else Jesus had to say about light, which is at the beginning of the New Testament, if you flip back about a tenth or a quarter of the way from the Bible, you'll find Matthew, you are the light of the world. Now, back in Matthew, he said, I am the light of the world. But now he's talking to you and me. Wherever you are, he's saying, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. See, you have been raised up with Christ. The word says we have been seated together with Christ in the heavenly realms. We're no longer mired in pit and darkness. We're no longer walking in gloom and distress. But we've been lifted up by the hand of God. We've been lifted up in order to glorify Jesus and to walk with Him in the light as He is in the light. You are the light of the world. And a town built on a hill can't be hidden. You are the light of the world. You can't be hidden. Don't try to hide who you are in Christ. I meet people and they're like, well, I don't want to offend somebody by acting like a Christian. I don't want to offend somebody by living like Christ. You can't be hidden. Verse 15 goes on to tell us how we need to live. It says, people don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl. What good is that? If we cover all of our lamps so their light can't shine, the light is of no use. But instead, they put that lamp on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. You are the light of the world. Jesus has breathed life and light into you. He's breathed life and life light into me. And we can no longer be hidden in Palm Beach County. We can no longer be hidden in the state of Florida. We can no longer be hidden in America because people are once again walking in darkness. And Jesus says the light has come and he's put it in me and you. And he's elevated us, not to his level. He is the head. We are the body. He is always above us. But he says, you need to shine. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises on you. The glory of the Lord, the head of the body, Christ rises when we rise up, when we no longer hide in fear, when we no longer choose to be hidden, but we choose to take the place of a city on a hill. When we no longer choose to cover our light, but we expose it and we stand tall in Christ and allow that light to shine. Verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I thank God for the people of Sound Church. I thank God for Renee and Mike who head up our, our compassion ministries. We were able to help several families over Christmas with, with food. And, and comfort and love. We were have able in Thanksgiving as well. And we continue to do that throughout the year. We want to be a church that shines with the light of life. We want people to know Jesus when they meet us. Can you be that person? Can you be the light of the world that Jesus has called you to be? I pray that you can. I want to thank you for joining me this morning. And before we go, I want to pray that prayer. If you'll just pause where you are and join me in this prayer. Father God, 
Thank you for allowing Jesus to come to bring light into the darkness. Thank you, Lord, that you've illuminated him to me that I might know you. And because he is light, I want to walk in the light. I want to walk like Jesus walked. And I want my light to shine. Take away the darkness. Take away the fear. Take away the things that would prevent me from following Jesus in the light so that others will know. So that Palm Beach County will be transformed by the light of Christ through us. That America will be transformed as we arise and shine because our light, Jesus Christ, has come. And as we do that, Lord, let your glory rise over the land and cover it like the waters cover the sea. And I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope you had a blessed Christmas. And I hope you're gearing up for an amazing new year. I believe that in 2022, God is calling all of us to walk like Jesus walked. Walk in the light because he is in the light. Like the wise men, don't walk the same way. Don't go in the same direction that you came. But let the Holy Spirit guide you according to the light of the world. And I guarantee this, if you walk in the light, every one of your footsteps will be sound. Hope to see you next week, either online or in person at Royal Palm Beach Cultural Center at 930 for another great morning as the people of God gather together a sound church. Until then, we love you and we bless you. Have a great week and a happy new year. Yes. Yeah.